Okay, so you hot glued it all the way around and you just built it up with a bunch of hot glue to keep contaminants from getting in there so you can sandblast the housing and that's pretty cool. So we got this bearing out. I want you to get that bearing out. Mm -hmm. And we'll do that. Oh no, I have a visitor. <laughs> I think it's Hammerhead's friend. Come on up. Come on in. Come visit. I think it's one of those crazy Canadians. I think I got a crazy Canadian in my driveway. <laughs> How you been? Not bad, you? Nice to see you again. You got an ugly one, that's what Yeah. I got an ugly hat on today. My little pony hat. <laughs> All right, we're making a YouTube video on uh, taking apart an actuator. Oh. Want to help? Sure. All right, let's have some fun. Go ahead and pull all the way up in the driveway. Cut. In ten, ten minutes, right? It's fucking are out we can uh, take it apart finish taking it apart right you need to flip it over and take the the coolant clamshell off of it yep okay well, let's do that we can also disable or disassemble this so I can work on that cable So that thing just comes right out after you uh, that's her desoldered. And we're taking this apart uh, so that I can sandblast the inside of the housing out where the coolant channel is to remove any anodizing or any gunk that has built up. Well, it works good. I don't think I have a vintage original up in here. Okay. Well. You don't get here that often, though. <laughs> I might never ever get back. That's why I make a point. I don't know. Our messy workshop where we took apart a bunch of actuators. No, there was one trip where it didn't come here. Come to think of it. Uh, you were saying sometimes these things don't want to come apart, so you got to grab them under here, under this, under this lip right here. There's a little lip mm -hmm. right there. You can see it. There's a little place where you can catch it and give it a little boop. But here, uh... when it's together, you can do that too sometimes. Yeah, you just best the screwdriver there. Ah, okay. And lift, it, and lift it up like that. Okay, so sometimes you can get it there because sometimes you can't get around this corner right here. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. It, it always works like this. So. Okay. That's a different housing. That's not the one we just sandblasted, right? No, nah, no, it's a different one. I just wanted to show one as okay. an example. Yeah, you can get a little. I can't believe. 
just ease it up. Yep. Nice and easy. And we'll try to save that gasket as well. Yeah, you can see some anodizing in there. Let me see it. See how brown and, and discolored that is? It's uh, anodized. Not really bad. I've seen worse, but uh, it's anodized pretty good. It's not, definitely not going to transfer heat as well as it should. Looks like maybe uh, the coolant wasn't in really good shape. A lot of deposits in there. So, and you got a gasket? Yeah. Okay. It's worn a bit flat. Okay. Can so you see on the we... camera it's got like this lip? Yeah, we're going to have to replace that gasket. Yeah. Okay, you got some spares out of one of these other ones laying around, don't you? Yeah. Okay, we'll just put one of those in there. Rolling. Um, here's an example of how much scale is actually in this. Gets on these things. Look at that scale that builds up in them. And uh, that's the anodizing there underneath there. You can see the black. The aluminum gets anodized and scaled and then it doesn't transfer heat. And then the the actuator after three or four or five hundred thousand miles you know might start going bad because it just can't transfer or wick away the heat from the turbo so that's what i'm doing and this is protecting it from getting any dirt in the motor and uh i'm just gonna finish sandblasting it down Cut. so you're slowly prying up the uh the hot glue mm -hmm. nice and careful and that sealed it against the sandblasting process. Cool. All right, now we're going to record checking the circuit board. Start with the uh, J1939, which is going to be these. These two pins here. It's gonna be those two pins right there. No, I wanna Should be 120 ohms. Those two pins. 119.7. Close enough. And you're gonna check across that large capacitor. Let me show this is a very large capacitor here on the top side of the board. You're gonna use the bottom side of the board to check it. And you should get a pretty high resistance and you should see a charge. Yep. Yep. And that's on the 20,000 ohm scale on the meter. Okay. What else you got? This capacitor here. going to be on the oh that's the two mega ohm resistor oh that was the two mega ohm side okay so the large capacitor is almost a mega ohm 0 0.97 this one is on the 20,000 ohm res resistance scale and what do you have across there this black capacitor here 5.5 that's close enough. 5.7, 5.6 would be probably acceptable. Now you got a capacitor there, and you have some here, you have some here, and what do you got across there? 6.7 kilo ohms. Okay. What do we have next? So this one would probably be the equivalent somewhere here yeah for the uh, other coil motor coil and it's 6.7 yep same so the three phase motor so there should be three sets and then you have that one 6.7 yep and you have two over here and one over there one there, 6.7. My phone goes crazy. And what do you have here? Same, 6.7, yep. And one there for the 
other leg of the motor, 6.69, 6.7, okay. All right, for the power and ground, with the motor and everything disconnected, it's gonna be quite high, especially from a meter. So I've got it on the 200 or two mega ohm scale again. And this big pad area here is obviously the ground. And this shorter little small square pad is obviously the power. Because these two are the J1939. So that's ground, that's power. And I'm gonna watch it here on the meter. And it should be upwards of 340, 330 mega ohms or higher. And you can see that it's slowly climbing. Because what it's doing is it's charging many of the capacitors on the circuit board. But without the motor or any of the devices connected, obviously the resistance is going to be super high. So I would think if you got a very low resistance here and didn't, didn't uh, charge, uh, slowly charge like that, then you would have a bad capacitor or maybe a semiconductor somewhere on the board that's going bad. But uh, it all checks out. Really? And more anodizing on the inside of this and dried coolant filled up. That's the, uh, the coolant chamber. And uh, the threads for the pipe fittings, that looks really good. That looks really good. So we're good to go on the threads. We just need to clean this thing up and uh, get all the anodizing off the inside of it. Cut.